I was hoping to leave this episode for later in this series, but due to the way I have designed this particular airport, I'm going to have to handle this issue now. I mentioned some time ago that I was starting the research for uh, multiple terminal operations. This bit of research and the tool that it unlocks can either save your airport like it's about to do for me, or it can utterly destroy it if you don't realize what you're doing and you're not very careful with how you do things. Multiple terminal operations is literally having multiple terminals. If I treat uh, what I was previously calling wing A or gate A of my airport as a single terminal and then gate B as a separate terminal, they will function as separate entities. So staff, vehicles, passengers will go to one terminal or the other Right at the moment, what I have is passengers trying to board planes for gate B, turning up to the desks that I had intended to use for gate A and vice versa. So I've got lots and lots of passengers crossing every which way, trying to get to their aeroplanes without starting from what I consider to be the right location. So there's a lot of unnecessary walking around. If we look at these um, desks, you'll likely find, I'm not going to check each one here, but you'll likely find that they're doing check-in for one of these flights. And if you watch the passengers, we've got people walking every which way along this path because they've checked in here. Now they need to go up through here, in through this security section. It's all just out of order. So what I need to do is actually define my terminal zones. So I'm going to start with the stands. This is terminal one and all of the gates that are linked to it. And I'll be very careful about where I draw that because I don't want that room included right now. And these check-in desks are part of terminal one and this uh, actually, no. These passenger services are part of Terminal 1. And I actually want to disconnect that room for now. And I want to connect that depot. Now, Terminal 2 is all of Gate B. and the eventual baggage room for gate B and the security and check-in section of gate B. Plus, of course, the passenger services. Once I've achieved that, I have to then double check that I haven't missed anything and figure out what I'm doing with this staff room. Because right at the moment, the staff here, um, they may have accidentally become assigned to Terminal 1 because I did draw it over the top of them, but the idea is I wanted that staff room to be considered outside of either terminal because I want all my admins in there, but I'm going to have to rethink that. Now I may just have to accept the fact that admins are going to be part of Terminal 1. If you accidentally merge the two, like if I drew a line between here and here, you would end up with one terminal and it would just go back to functioning the same way it already did, where everything can go in any direction. And I do need to be very careful about drawing that. So I'm gonna zoom right in and make sure that I'm not selecting the wall. And that didn't do what I wanted, thank you. So the wall is not part of either terminal, it's dividing the two. And this depot is part of terminal two. I've deliberately left the two emergency services 
outside of either terminal zone. I don't want them assigned to either. I need to remove this from the road. Roads themselves are not considered to be one thing or the other. Vehicles can go anywhere they like. But for neatness sake, I'm going to um, mark it off either as this one or that one or neither. Partly just to make it easier for, to see where the dividing line is. Um, this will eventually be part of Terminal 2. And runways do not need to be either. You can set things up so that you have multiple terminals running off the same runways. I don't in this particular design, but beware that you can. Now I'm just going to repair that while I'm here. Okay, now that we've marked out the zones, we need to think carefully about vehicles. I'll start with vehicles because they're easier to deal with simply because there aren't as many. Okay, we've got... Right, these are the vehicles which are assigned and these are the vehicles which are currently in a pool waiting to be assigned. So we've got one Avgas and one Jet A1. That's wrong. I know there should be two Jet A1 trucks down here somewhere. So it's time to go and look at our vehicles. Filter them all off. Show me just the fuel trucks, please. This one. So we've got the Avgas truck, which is part of Terminal 1 and is assigned down here. We've got this small truck, which is assigned down here, and this small truck, which is assigned down here, but one of them is obviously in the wrong place right now. We can see that this truck has been assigned to Terminal 2 because that's where it was at the time the terminal zone was drawn. However, Reassigning him is not strictly something that I have to do manually. I don't have to assign him to a parking space again because he's already assigned to my open air depot. I don't have to go into this panel to shift things from one side to the other because when he gets back to his depot, he will automatically be reassigned to the correct terminal. Avgas and Jet A1 are sorted. As I said, I'm trying to keep these unassigned. I'll find out if that's a problem later on down the line and let you know. And I don't have anything else assigned to Terminal 1, that's correct. Whereas Terminal 2 has six pushback trucks and six stair trucks, that is correct. Excellent. So our vehicles are sorted. Now let's worry about staff. Right, what are you? Passenger service agents, right. I'm pretty sure I don't need that many passenger service agents on Terminal 1, so I'm going to unassign some of them. Let's take it down to 20 and unpause for a moment so they get assigned there. I said 20, thank you. Assigned there. Uh, security officers, 14's probably more than I need. Let me get out of terminal view and have a count. So, I've got one medium gate that needs four, I've got one small gate that needs one, I've got a couple of patrols, and then you need some spares for people being uh, on their break. So four, five, six, seven for the patrols. Let's say 10 to 15 is plenty of security stuff. We've got 14 currently, that's fine by me. Terminal 2, on the other hand, has a large requirement for security officers because there's four for each one of these, that's 20 right there. So currently we have 26. I probably want to hire some more. Previously, because I didn't have terminals assigned, 
the number of XS security officers I had was good enough to cover both parts of my terminal, both parts of my airport. But now that they are assigned, spares on Terminal 1 will never support Terminal 2. So you do have to have, then have additional spares. Um, security officers. And double check. Oops, okay. I need to switch off auto assignment. Otherwise, as soon as they arrive, they will be assigned to one terminal then the next in a round robin kind of order and that's definitely not what I want right now. And you can see these numbers turning red, that means I don't have enough. It's the equivalent of there being a red line here to say there aren't enough janitors, or more to the point that there are jobs available for janitors that haven't been assigned yet. So this currently has four janitors, that currently has 19. I'll sign some more here, and I have way too many ramp agents in Terminal 1. Um, how many would I need? Good question. Not as many as I need for Terminal 2. If you leave them unassigned like this, they should eventually get assigned as a job becomes available. But that seems to be somewhat unreliable, so it's best to manually assign people. I think I was aiming for about 15 or 14 security guards. I ended up with 21, so that's probably what's going on there. So if I watch this and this, they might eventually pick up a job. See, it's just assigned up to 16. I said 14, <laughs> and it's gone up to 15 again. So push some more over to Terminal 2, and let's push another ramp agent there as well. That should have things covered reasonably well. Once you've set up terminals in this way, it's something you need to keep a very close eye on. You need to be checking your staffing levels on a regular basis. And that's why it's important to keep up your routine of rejecting all your lower applicants so that every now and then when you do need to hire people you can just come in and get high quality staff all in one hit be aware it does actually save in between sessions so if you've saved game with a lot of high quality applicants available they will still be available when you come back as i mentioned using terminal zoning can be very difficult to get right. I kept getting this warning up here, an area without terminal coverage has unclaimed job tasks, but no employees of the correct type are assigned to the areas. Now, it took me a very long time to track this down. What I noticed was if I unassigned a security person so that there was temporarily someone able to take jobs outside of either terminal, it would send the message away but it would come back again however much longer later eventually i tracked it down if you look at my security patrol it goes out to here where the terminal building used to exist but no longer does if i remove that patrol the message will go away there's always a reason Sometimes finding the reason is very difficult. This is not the only problem I've seen. I've got intermittent warning flags about people not being able to get in or out of secure zones. I'm still trying to find what the cause of that is. 